Oh, welcome back for another exciting episode of Penny's Hot Rod and Custom. Just old Derek here again. Um, I'm happy all, I finished the bearing on that side too. I locked it in. Happy. It, it's done. I cut the, the little oil gallery in there. That's done. Um, I think out of the whole engine, uh, this, um, uh, right, the shaft was worn. I made it worse by putting vice grips on it, but it was worn. So I want to change that. I tried putting vice grips on it, and it just kept, um, I don't know, just ripping apart. It's really cheap metal. It's very gummy. So, I forgot I had a, um, a stud, stud remover. It's just a snap-on stub remover. And, uh, oh, I did. Put it on there, and if, I kind of already, well, I did think I broke it loose, but yeah. So what I'll do is I'll put the camera down, and you guys can see. Okay, I thought this was thread, but no, it isn't. It's just a pressed in fit. So I think when I put it back together, I will put a little bit of Loctite in there. And, but uh, I found uh, hmm, somewhere a good piece of, uh, oh, right, good piece of rod. Because that's where your timing gear goes on there. It's just a 3 8 rod. So I'll clean that up. We'll cut this into proper length. Put that in. And I, I think then we can start bolting the, uh, the cylinder head on and put the connecting rods in. Um, I got piston ring. Oh, oh, yeah. I was able. Got we were, had piston rings in stock at at my my brother's house. So uh, we'll go through that, putting it on. See if we have to gap the rings, but uh, yeah, I'll. Go find my saw and we'll go cut this rod and put that in. I've already cut myself a nice little um, new shaft that we'll put into for the uh, timing gear. And uh, I just started my hole to make sure it was in the right spot. So I guess we'll drill that out. And then maybe put it into the block then. Not a dull bit this time. I know it should be oil in there. That would be the smart thing. a hole. Cardi pin fit perfect. Alright, and now all I gotta do is clean the mess up and then like I said we'll put that in there. That starts in there because that's where your timing, this is your uh, timing pickup or go this way. And then we have, that's your timing gear. And I know I'm gonna have to make uh, little shim spacers up, so we'll have to go over to the ladies and make a couple shim spacers up because I like to have everything in line with the gear. So I think what I'll do is I'll go find the bolt. Oh, before I get too crazy, I have to uh, make a gasket up. Because since we have oil in here, it splashes and it'll just leak out. 
I'm not going to silicone this up, so. I'll go find something and we'll make a gasket, I believe, before we get too far here. All right, I've got my uh, new um, new little shaft in here. I just lined it up the gears because I want to have my gears pretty much straight to each other. That way I know how far to tap this in. I did put a little bit of um, Loctite in here. And I'll probably leave it just about like that. That way I can put just a little washer in here. And in the back we're going to have to make a little stress washer back here. Because there's that much movement. Because I don't want to push it in all the way. Because then you see how much the gear is exposed here. So. No big deal to make up a little. Um, shit, basically like a shim washer. So. Uh, I don't know, this one did it pretty good. Crankshaft all nice and bolted in nicely. It, I got my paper gasket back here, back in. Um, I guess uh, next thing maybe we'll just make up a little, um, a little shim up here, a little, you'll see a little uh, shim washer up here. And, hmm. I have no idea what will be the next part. We'll have to find out. Hi, right. it only took me just a minute. Just uh, found out a little washer on the lathe. All I did is just did whatever size I had and drilled it out to three eighths. And I will put it on the shaft. That's what I want. It's pretty spacer there. <coughs> and this is my. Uh, I think we call it like a white spark system in a way. That's what makes your spark when it touches on this part of the gear. And so that space that I put in, that lined up my gear just about perfect. I'm happy with that now. Time I put my little uh, carter pin in there. Yeah, I'm happy. That's done. I think now maybe we'll try to... Uh, put the piston on and put the cylinder head on and... Get into something, well, get this thing done. <laughs> so, uh, and in this case, I was actually very lucky because the cylinder wall, or the cylinder, was actually very nice shape. You can still see the factory hatch marks like when they uh, honed it out. This engine didn't run that much, so. So, uh, I did some measurement and yeah, two and a half inch uh, piston ring will just work perfect. Uh, so I called my brother up and he ended up, he had some rings in stock at home. So, it doesn't happen that way because most of the time I always have to make my own piston ring. Like, these are my own piston rings I made. This is a big one. This is like, what, five and three quarters. But there's a whole lot of math into making them piston rings. we got to heat treat them. And one day we'll, we'll go through one we'll make piston rings from scratch. I do have a couple engines that need it, so. But this time I got lucky. So I have a couple, so. All you have to do is when you make sure, um, especially on an older engine, make sure that uh, there's no, no side to side play. That's uh, this point and this point, you only really want is about two thou for side to side play. Because if you start saying we have 5 foul side to side play, you'll start losing your compression around the piston ring. Doesn't matter how good of a new piston ring you have, but if you have um, a fairly good gap on each side, like 5, 6 foul, you're going to lose compression. I, I've gone through that. And it's, so that's one thing you have to make sure. So I have to clean this ring up before, or piston before I do this, but. Um, so that's one thing you have to look out, and then the next thing you have to look out is your end gap. Because, uh, let's see if I can do it. Well, hard to squeeze, but when this is squeezed in the cylinder, you want um, a bit of a gap because when the piston, uh, when the rings expand, they gotta move. 
so you can't have them tight. Or what happens if you get them tight, they will start scoring up your cylinder wall, break a piston, or do, do a lot of damage. So the general rule of end-to-end -end play on a piston ring is usually, I believe, uh, three and a half to four foul per inch. So this is uh, a two and a half inch uh, piston. So we got four, eight, then half of that, well, 10. I'm just gonna hit 12 foul for end to end play, just to be safe. It could, so, so four foul. So as long as I have uh, 10 foul for end to end play, I'm perfect. I don't want to have it uh, uh, bunching up in there and then breaking something or scoring the shoulder, the, the walls out. Or, but this one's a little trickier to do your end to end play because it's, uh, I think it's almost like a hydraulic ring. But uh, so this one almost uh, seat perfectly where you hold the compression. Like this is a different style of ring. There's all different types where, like this style here. We got this style where you can have with a 45 degree cut, uh, one that goes over and one that goes under. There's many styles, but this is one we're going with. So, so what I'll do is I'll go grab my um, uh, feeler gauges and we will put it in the cylinder and make sure we have our proper end to end gap. So I got that and then we'll make sure we can do that and then we can start putting this back together. Okay, here's uh, one of the new rings and it, it, it's fitting tight. There's no way I'm going to get uh, a two thou uh, shim through there. It's, 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 it's tight. And I don't have uh, a piston ring groover. But I have cleaned this up just a little bit on the leaf with emery cloth. And uh, best I'm going to do, I don't want to set it up and start cutting <laughs> cutting the piston. So, I had a piece of uh, ground plate here. I just use a little spigot just to hold my ring. Put it on to the emery cloth here. I got to finish off this. Uh, I, um, and we caught this my plate here because we have two clamps to hold it, but I'll get to that one day. But and just a few figure eight patterns or just move it around. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Give it a clean. And you can see how this is the ring factory, and this is why I have uh, taken the emery cloth and and cutting it down just very very lightly and now i'll just measure it because i know my measurements because i've been using um gauge blocks i'll show you in a second to see where i am because i want two foul uh clearance so what i do i just check it okay i'm about uh, there. There. i'm pretty consistent around the ring like I said, I'm only, I'm playing with less than a half a foul here for, for tolerance. That's no problem. So, now I'll spin it around the piston. Hmm. It's not as tight as it was before. And, and see, now I, I can move the ring side to side like that a little bit. But with the new ring, I can barely move it. It's tight. And, and, and it's grabbing. You don't, you don't want the ring to grab in there. So I've got room there, I can spin it around. I know my measurement here. It's getting pretty close. We're just about two thou under. If it end up these uh, rings were exactly on uh, one and an eight and the piston groove were one and an eight. So but I need two thou clearance. So all I do is just put okay, and now I can pull my uh my uh Feel the stock through. It's uh, still a little tad tight, but just show you guys how you how you can do it. Nah. Or I know my size here. I can go here. This is um, 
exactly one eight. And it, it, it it's not gonna fall out. It, it you gotta kind of push it in. And here, one thou smaller than one eight, it falls out. Yeah, it's a little tight there, but it falls out. So I'll just take my time and um I think this is one thou under one eight, so I'm gonna make it uh my ring three thou under one eight so that way I got lost to end to end play. And just take your time at it and you'll get it there. Okay, after uh taking my time uh Following it, to, well, I just, yeah, I just filing it down, or down to my shooting what size I wanted, and then end up on two thou undersize, that's what I want, that's perfect. Now, I want to do my end gap. So, the easiest way to do this without breaking anything, or is carefully put it in your cylinder, just carefully. And, but you want to square it. So just take your piston, push it down that way a little bit. That way we know it's square. And okay, this, this bore here would be good with um, 10 thou for end to end play. I'm going to hit 12 thou. If I get my 12 thou, I'm happy. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's my split line there. I can get my 12 thou here through nothing no problem so this i'm probably got 14 thou but i'm happy with that if i needed second gear with 10 thou but this is good so that's how you check that so I pull that one back out and we'll check the second one because this one has two two pistons you can see the two rings group You know, these are a little trickier to put in, so. A little feisty one. There we go. And I know the, the cylinder is straight from top to bottom. I've already mic'd it. it this, this jug's actually in very nice shape. Okay. Uh, here we go. I don't know if the lighting's good, but. There, if I just. Put my fuel gauge through there, and I can do that no problem. There's no hang, no scraper or anything, so I'm good. And that's 12 thou. I know 10 thou my size, so that part's done. So we're done. The rings, the rings are finished. Uh, all I'm gonna do is. Um, uh, Dip your gun, quickly blow all this stuff out and oil it up. And, um, uh, oh, what do I do with it? Connecting rod somewhere. Oh, here's the connecting rod. I've already um, tightened this onto my uh, crankshaft in here, and it's perfect size. I'm not worrying about with the Babbitt or anything. It's actually not in bad shape, really. So. You but you can sure see how they did things back then. <laughs> Look at how big that hole is. It just, you don't get two bolts put in there, but that's the way they did it back then. So that's how it works. And this is your little pickup here. And this is what the uh, oil, the, in the, the connecting rod part here for this part. That's what oil. And then this dipper here, this splashes you to everything inside here, up into the piston, up into the, uh, yeah, here's your piston, that's where it lubricates through there. And then your oil puts inside the uh, block. and Everywhere it's supposed to be oil with that. That's where it splashes. That's the oil and pump on this thing. So. As you can see back back in the day, they're not too critical of uh, doing things at tight tolerance. Everything's fairly, fairly loose. So, But I've already checked that. Same as uh, whatever I did with the wrist pin. The wrist pin's in very nice shape too, so oh, there it is. Right there, it, just a little mark, but it's fine. They're 
hardly any of maybe a, a quarter of a foul maybe but it perfect so put that back together and put the top end back on this motor together it looks start to look like something i thought i'd show you guys but this is how usually i get my piston ring down onto the second or the third landing or whatever just a piece from um, pallet strapping and uh, just be careful when you side to side that way and then you just push your ring down to your next one there and then and you have to be careful you don't want to break it and there we go. There you go. And I got that ring on, no problem. This guy, where would I do get away? Oh, yeah. my other ring. Here you go. I just slide it on. There we go. But usually, the first one's easy to do. The second one's a little harder because you got to get off this one onto this guy. So, and remember when we put the, the piston in the um, cylinder, have these 180 degrees from each other. You're in. So. Just be like that but you can sure see how <laughs> the the, the uh, I guess the course shifted in this pattern and she just thin I guess back then they didn't waste anything I think you guys can see that because these holes here are all for uh, oiling purpose. Pitch up for that one, that one. Yeah, you can. So, ah, it survived before, it's going to survive again. Like I said, this, this, this engine didn't run much. So. And uh, you can see my uh, gear is perfectly on the shaft. There's hardly any play. If I can go, uh, you guys can pick this up. Oh, I forgot to put my air compressor on. Hey, right, here's how uh, good the uh, gear rides on the shaft. No problem in that shaft. I'll go find some oil and I guess we'll oil this uh, cylinder down. Okay, I have blown this out, wiped it down. I'm happy. It's, it's clean. Clean's gonna be. I did the same thing too. I locked the wrist pin in, so it's not going anywhere. Happy with that. Alright, we're gonna um, oil the cylinder down, oil the piston down, uh, and we'll put the piston in. You don't want to worry about putting some oil in because you don't want a dry, uh, a dry start or anything. You'll do damage that way. Oh yeah, okay. Got the ring laddered up. Okay. Remember, we want it uh, 180 degrees from each other. And uh, when this piston uh, goes in, it uh, has to go in like that. Because remember, the bolt goes this way and that way. When the crank comes down, it throws the oil around. So we got to make sure we put this in the right way. Which I can turn it around when it's in the box. So. All right. There's one. Okay, I can see the ring there. Just be gentle. You don't need to beat the heck out of her. If you beat the heck out of her, bad things can happen. You need to go in a little easier than that. Okay. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands, wipe them down. Now, 
I know the block. Goes like this. Yeah. I need that oil wick. That way. Okay, now I got everything just right. Because this is where your uh, lifter goes. And uh, that's where your DOS rod is, uh, DOS valve is. So before I take this, I want to throw, throw some, uh, some oil on the uh, crank shaft. You don't want anything dry. Okay. There, now I sheet it. Okay, we finally got the ball started. Okay. Now, uh, I'll get rid of that. I will go find the uh, four bolts for um, the bolt to jug down. And. Yeah, I'll go find the bolt and we'll keep on building her. Okay, I got that bolt and I had to take it off again. I forgot to put the gasket in there. So it's in there. So I'm not used to working on a small engine with all little gaskets like this on it. So, But I think what I'm going to do is leave the video here. Uh, you are making progress. Pretty soon she's should be getting closer to get this thing to be fired so um well, like always uh, thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the, the next one